Hey everyone. So in the previous video, we were talking about the acid mechanism which happens for halogenoalkanes. We know that the bond between carbon and the halogen atom is polar and when the halogen atom is eliminated, it might result in the formation of a carbocation. Now the carbocation could be stable, for example, in tertiary halogenoalkanes or it might not even form properly because that happens in primary halogenoalkanes. Let's start the analysis of the two kinds of acid mechanism. For the acid mechanism, we have two categories. Those are known as SN1 and SN2 mechanism. We will analyze both together to see the basic differences in them. Let's make a tertiary halogenoalkane where you can see there are three alkyl groups on the carbon attached to halogen, for example, bromine. And at the bottom, let's draw a primary halogenoalkane which has only one methyl group. Again, the same halogen is there, which is bromine atom. Another thing we know is that a carbon halogen atom, the bond basically is going to be polar in both scenarios because bromine is highly electronegative atom. If you start with a tertiary halogen alkene, like in the first case, if you start with a tertiary halogen alkene, you start with SN1 mechanism. What happens is that there are two steps. So basically there are two steps. Step number one and there would be a step number two. So it's a two step mechanism. In the first step, the carbon, the carbon halogen bond breaks down in a heterolytic manner and you get a carbocation. So what you get is a carbocation with the three methyl groups exactly in the same position but this time your carbon has a positive charge. So it's not partial plus anymore. It has a positive charge. Within the second step, like before the second step, a nucleophile, for example, cyanide being a nucleophile or OH being a nucleophile, anything can be a nucleophile. It donates the lone pair. Nucleophiles have a lone pair and that is the most important quality of a nucleophile. So nucleophile donates a lone pair and then what you see is the carbon makes a bond with the nucleophile by accepting the lone pair and that is a dative bond. So your nucleophile joins the molecule like this. So there are two steps basically. In step one, the halogen breaks or eliminates from the molecule using heterolytic fission and then the nucleophile joins before step two. When you notice a primary halogenoalkane like one at the bottom, you can't expect carbocation formation here. It is only one step mechanism. What happens that a nucleophile has to be in the surrounding? For example, this time I'll make a purple nucleophile. The nucleophile should be in the surrounding. It's only one step mechanism, so let me draw what happens in step one? It's only one step mechanism, only one step. It starts with the formation of a transition state. In a transition state, the carbon makes five bonds. Let me show you those five bonds are drawn this way. You can notice that the groups of the carbon which are not participating in the bond formation, I'm not drawing them. I can draw them at any random angle. So I'm not concerned about the methyl and the two hydrogens, but the bromine starts breaking the bond and the nucleophile starts forming the bond with the lone pair at the same time. This is all written in a proper square bracket like this with a minus charge. The carbon was partial plus, the halogen was partial minus, and this minus came because of the nucleophile. You draw it on a complete square bracket. 
that is what we call a transition state we call it a transition state and after the transition state is formed the halogen is eliminated like a bromide ion and your carbon is attached to the nucleophile the carbon is attached to the nucleophile you can see the nucleophile is drawn like this so in both cases you could see that the bromine atom is eliminated as a negative ion let me draw it on the first picture also bromine is eliminated as a byproduct but s n one mechanism has only two steps so you can see s n one mechanism basically has two steps let me write it over here s n one mechanism and at the bottom you can see s n two mechanism there's a sharp contrast between SN1 and SN2 let's write the differences between them SN1 mechanism SN2 mechanism let's go back to the picture and see the first difference the first difference is that SN mechanism SN1 mechanism needs two steps but SN2 has only one step it's easier to remember right because the opposite is happening so SN1 mechanism takes two steps and SN2 mechanism takes one step only. Let's go back to the picture to see another difference. In SN1 mechanism, a carbocation is formed over here like this. But there is literally no proper carbocation in SN2 because it could not handle a carbocation a primary halogen alkene could not handle a carbocation so another difference is in SN1 mechanism in SN1 mechanism a carbocation is formed a carbocation is formed but in SN2 mechanism in SN2 mechanism no carbocation is formed because they could not handle a carbocation let's go back in SN1 mechanism you can't see a transition state it was proper two steps but in SN2 mechanism there is a proper transition state where the carbon was making five bonds it's not very common in a transition state there are two bonds involved you can see a bond involved here another here one is being broken down another is being formed so in SN2 mechanism a transition state is formed so no transition state no transition state in SN1 and transition state transition state in SN2 SN1 mechanism was preferred by tertiary halogenoalkanes. If you notice, it was a tertiary halogenoalkane with three alkyl groups. SN1, um, SN2 mechanism rather was preferred by primary halogenoalkanes. Let's write that. SN1 mechanism was preferred by tertiary halogenoalkanes but SN2 mechanism is preferred by primary halogenoalkanes if we finalize our understanding so far we need a energy profile diagram for both cases let me draw energy profile diagrams here if you notice that in energy profile diagram we put the progress of reaction on the x-axis progress on the x-axis and energy on the y-axis and energy is being written on the y-axis if you notice SN1 mechanism was two steps 
two steps mechanism step one and step two so since SN1 mechanism has two steps you will see two peaks here you will see two different peaks here because each step is one peak step one is a slower step step one when your tertiary halogen alkane makes a carbocation that is step number one it's a slower step so it happens really slowly because heterolytic fission is not an easy process since it happens slowly it has more activation energy this is step one in the first peak and the second is a step two the first peak is higher because step one is slow step two is faster because once the carbocation is formed it reacts really quickly once the carbocation is formed it reacts really quickly because then nucleophiles are attracted really well towards it so there are two peaks here because it's a two-step mechanism two-step mechanism and here you will see a carbocation formed when you notice the SN2 mechanism SN2 mechanism if you go back it is only single step starting from the transition state towards the product so there is only one peak over here you will see only one peak not two peaks only one peak and at the peak you can see the transition state is formed there's no carbocation but rather the transition state it's only one step process and there is no carbocation formed let me write it it is step one only so in today's video we talked about the idea of the ASIN mechanisms we noticed that ASIN mechanisms could be ASIN1 or ASIN2 ASIN1 goes for tertiary and SN2 goes for primary we know SN1 mechanism is two-step process and we know SN2 mechanism is rather on the contrary one-step process we noticed at some differences and then we also looked at their energy profile diagrams I hope this video is clear for you guys stay tuned thanks